All right, so part two, moving on, uh, talking about comparing the mean and the median. Uh, they measure center in different ways, and that's and that ties into just how they're both calculated. Mean uh, involves every single observation, and therefore is influenced by every single observation. Where median um, is based on position, so it's it's not. And we saw in that previous example that the mean was drawn upward to 31.25 and the median was was 22.5 so and that that indicates a skewed to the right distribution uh, if we have a mean and a median uh, for for a symmetric distribution if it's perfectly symmetric um, our mean and median will be the same right smack dab in the middle x bar and uh, median. And I kind of went over this in class briefly. If we have a skewed to the right distribution like this, then our median is still in the center, but our mean is going to be drawn this way, depending on the observations. But the mean should be greater than the median for a skewed right distribution. We have a skewed left distribution. Our median will be at the center, but our mean will be drawn to the left down to those lower values. Right? So x bar is less than the median for a skewed left distribution. Um, the example that we used in the previous slide was a uh, skewed right distribution and our mean was what 31.25 minutes and our median was 22.5 and that satisfies this assumption and this inequality that 22.5 is less than 31.25 so uh, that just shows us a numerical representation of how this data is skewed right too, along with our visual representation. Uh, do not confuse the average value of a variable with its typical value. You might hear the median referred to as the typical value. Uh, if they ask for the average, they want the mean, not the median. Um, if they don't ask for the average, they just maybe ask for a measure of center or something, uh, and it's a skewed distribution, or or any distribution really, the median is going to be a good uh, and probably the best representation of, of, of central tendency just because it does not, it's not affected by, by the distribution or the, the observations um, individually. Uh, it's based on position. Uh, let's see, let me get rid of all this ink. Uh, if the distribution is exactly symmetric, the mean and the mean are exa exactly the same. I said that in a skewed distribution, the mean is usually farther out in the long tail than is the median. So yeah, uh, I, I drew that for you, um, showing the skewed distributions and how the mean would be greater uh, or less than depending on which direction it's skewed. So now we're getting into measures of spread, numerical measures of spread. So this is the interquartile range, uh, IQR. Um, the measure of center alone can be misleading, um, especially if you do have a skewed distribution. Um, so a useful numerical description of a distribution requires both a measure of center and spread. So um, how we calculate the IQR is through quartiles. So the median is actually a quartile. It's our second quartile. Um, it is the 50th percentile of the distribution. Um, our first quartile is the 25th percent, so 0.25. So a bad decimal point, but yeah, it's supposed to be point. Um, and uh, it's the 25th percentile, the first quartile, hence the word quartile. Um, and then uh, our third quartile is the 75th percent, the third quartile. So just like we would define the median, we ar arrange the distribution in, in, in chronological order, and we can find uh, the first quartile and the third quartile based uh, on that. And if you notice, 
uh, since the median is the 50th percentile of the data, the first quartile, Q1, is the median of the first half of our data. So it is the median of the first 50% of our data. It's hard to write with this thing, I apologize. First 50% of our data. And Q3 is the second half. So if we have um, uh, 20 observations, um, we've, we found that our, our uh, median fell in the 10 and a half position, and we found that by doing n plus 1 over 2. Well, if we're going to find the position of our first quartile, we can do we can still use that same formula n plus 1 over 2, but we just cut our sample in half, right? The first half of our data will have 10 numbers. The second half of our data will have 10 numbers. So we can just do 10 plus 1 divided by 2, which would be 11 divided by 2, which would be 5.5, right? So the 5, the fifth and a half position will be where our first quartile is. And then for the third, we use the same, and there will be 10 data points on that side as well. It will be the 15th and a half position. So between the 15th and 16th observation. This, the first quartile, this is Q3. And this is Q1. The first quartile will be between the fourth and the, no, the fifth and the sixth, sorry. And the third quartile will be between the 15th and the 16th. In our interquartile range, the IQR is defined by Q3 minus Q1. So whatever the observations are in those quartiles, when they're based on position, so whatever the values are, we do Q3 minus Q1, the values, and that will give us the IQR. So let's do an example where we have to do this. Same example, page 53. Um, I have ordered them in chronological order this time, uh, and given arrows kind of indicating where we're looking for, uh, and highlighted uh, this is the 5th, this is the 6th, this is the 10th, this is the 11th, uh, this is the 15th, this is the 16th position, right? So you'll notice this is the Q1, this is Q2 or median, and Q3. Um, so there's our median, 22.5 over our Q1 is 15. The average of both of these, right, is 15. The average of these, though, is 42.5. So just like we had to find the average of 20 and 25 for the median, you have to find the average of 40 and 45 for the four, uh, Q3. So we can calculate our IQR now. And it's just 42.5 minus 15. And that is 27.5 minutes. And how we interpret this number is the range of the middle, let's pay attention to this, middle half of travel times. So that middle half, let's look at this. Our distribution, a symmetric distribution. Our median is the 50th percentile, the midpoint, right in the half. Our first quartile should be about right here, right? The first quarter. And our third quarter quartile should be about right here, roughly. Uh, that represents this is 25%, right? And this is another 25%. And that represents the middle 50% of our data. The middle 50% of the data in terms of spread, right? The range, the 50% range of our data about the center. So that's why the IQR is very useful. It's not, just like the median is not affected by uh, outliers or influential observations, the IQR is not either because it's based on position. It's based on the, the third quartile and the first quartile which are based on position 
and are not uh, they are resistant to outliers they are not influenced by outliers so and notice this interpretation here um, is in context which is always important um, so moving on uh, in addition to serving as a measure of spread, the interquartile range is used to calculate outliers. So we're going to use this 1.5 times whatever the IQR is. Um, and uh, by using that, so 1.5 times our IQR was, I think our IQR was 27.5. Um, that would be what we are calculating. And I actually do calculate it below. Um, we have Q3 is 42.5. If you remember from that, this this should be a 53. I messed up right there. It's page 53. Sorry. Um, Q1 was 15. Q3 is 42.5. RQR was 27.5. That was just 42.5 minus 15. Uh, for these data, 1.5 times the RQR was is 41.25. So our interquartile range times 1.5 is that. And how we find our outliers is we subtract, so let's think about that. This is our median. Here's our first quartile. And here's our third quartile. Anything 1.5 times the IQR plus Q3. So anything that falls outside of that is going to be an outlier. And then anything 1.5 times the RQR minus that minus the first quartile will be an outlier on the left side and it just kind of depends on the skewness or the shape of the distribution whether whether you're gonna have uh, outliers on each side now let's look at this so this was for our lower outliers our uh, our lower bound outliers so first quartile which is 15 minus 41.25 is a negative number and we were remember we're measuring commuting times uh, we can't have negative commuting times on uh, you know you can't go back uh, or you can't have negative minutes uh, unless you're you have a DeLorean I guess so you're in back to the future but uh, Q3 plus 1.5 our upper bound outliers 42.5 plus 41.25 we get 83.75 and I don't know if you remember but one of our observations uh, was 85 and that falls outside of that range of 83.75 is the max we can have so 85 would be an outlier so 60, uh, 60, 60 and 65 uh, would be okay but this 85 would, would classify as an outlier and um, let me get rid of all this ink so you can see this. Uh, any travel time shorter than negative 26.25 minutes, which we just went over that. We can't have that. You can't have negative minutes. Or longer than 83.75, which we do have an observation, uh, longer than that, uh, is considered an outlier. So here's our stem and leaf plot. And this 8.5, I'm going to highlight it in red, is, a, uh, is an outlier. All right, so uh, this is we're going to get into what we call five number summary, and I'll actually show you how you can find this on the calculator uh, very easily. Um, but what it is first is just it's your in the observation, uh, all the observations in your distribution. You got the min and the max, you got your first quartile and your third quartile, and you got the median. So that's a five number summary. And what we can use this five number summary for is to help us construct a box plot. So uh, that's what we're going to do in the next slide. So five number summary and how to make a box plot. You draw and label number line so you have an x-axis, right? And you label it according to the range of your data. So you have numbers that range from you know, 10 to 50. That's what you're going to label your graph from. Uh, draw a central box from Q1 to Q3. So if this is where Q1 falls on the number line and Q3 falls here, you draw a box like that. Uh, you note that the median is inside the box. So wherever the median falls, you note it by that. Uh, and you extend lines to your min and max values unless there are outliers present. All right, so we're going to run out of time. And when, when uh, in the next part of the video, I will show you how to construct a box plot using these uh, numbers.